One of the things that you need to manage on your farm is compaction. If you can reduce overall compaction, usually that means more root growth, which means you're going to have better yields. But where does it start? I mean, how are you going to know if you even have a compaction problem out there? Well, first of all, measuring compaction, there, there are a lot of different ways to do it. Okay, first of all, you could spend some money. You could buy a penetrometer. It's basically a probe, a soil probe, that has a gauge on it that shows how much pressure that it takes to push down through that soil. And as you see that pressure get higher, all of a sudden you aren't gonna have roots that are gonna be able to penetrate through that soil. That's one way to measure compaction. Another way to measure compaction is simply to dig a post hole. Uh, if you dig a post hole, you can dig it as deep as you want to. I would suggest digging as far as your arm can reach down into the hole. Then you take a knife, you need a blade that's at least three or four inches long, and then stick that knife blade into the side of that uh, hole and start pulling it up through the soil. Once you meet a point of resistance, that's where you've got a compaction layer. You'll probably meet a couple of layers on your way up, uh, and it may be more depending on if there have been some issues out in that field, uh, like maybe you've been digging your wheels in deep in some muddy conditions. Finally, there's the root pit. Uh, if you want to see really what's going on below the ground, a great way to do it is with a root pit. You, you dig on our farm oftentimes four feet deep and maybe the width of a skid loader bucket is what we'll do a lot of times. If you have a backhoe, you could use that as well. Same thing here. Then just run that knife up the side of that root pit and see what you have for compaction. Now, Darren, you didn't even mention your favorite way to check for compaction. That's just simply carry a spade out in the field all the time. Darren likes to do this and just poke around with that spade. You could certainly take a rod, anything. The big thing is you've got to get out in your field and look around a little bit. Walk through the field. A lot of times, just even literally walking in the field without sticking anything in the ground, I can tell, oh, hey, this ground is really hard, or oh, this ground does feel kind of soft. But in addition to that, we're not just talking about the top two inches, four inches, anything like that. We like to get those roots growing down two, three, four feet in the ground. And every crop out there can send some roots down two, three, four feet in the ground. So obviously you have to have good drainage because if the water table is way high, they're not gonna go deep. But the other thing is this whole compaction deal. And as soon as I mentioned drainage and we start thinking about water, compaction is going to vary dramatically. Let's say you got an inch of rain yesterday, well, all of a sudden you can push that rod through anything, right? But if you're in a drier area of the country like us, we get rain once or twice a month, so quite often our soil is really dry and we have a lot of compaction layers that the roots simply can't penetrate through. So this is incredibly important to check. Once you've found out and figured out, hey, I've got a little compaction issue, now you've got to manage it. There are a lot of different ways to go about this. I mean, one of the first things you've got to do is look at your soil test because quite often we can tell you, hey, if, you're, if you've got tremendously high magnesium and low calcium, Simply by getting some gypsum or lime or some other source of calcium out there, you'll get more porosity in your soil and you'll reduce your overall compaction issue. But if you've got a solid hard pan in one spot of the field, it's going to take more than that. All right, so the first thing that comes to mind for most folks is tillage. Well, what kind of tillage should I do to break up that compaction layer? Well, it depends on how deep the compaction is. Let's say, for example, that you have a plow pan at six inches where you've always done tillage, it's always been about six inches, and wow, you get six inches of fluffy soil, and then at the bottom of that, you just got a rock. So what do you do? Well, in that case, you may use some sort of conventional tillage that goes slightly deeper. Maybe your tillage goes seven inches, you get just below that compacted soil, flip it all up, and guess what? You've got fluffy soil now, maybe down at least a foot. That's a short-term fix. The problem with that is, as you're doing tillage at seven inches, the next year you do it at seven inches, pretty soon you've just moved your hard pan down and now it's at seven inches. So what I would recommend is varying the depth of tillage if you're in a conventional tillage system. That way you, you can avoid those things or at least make it longer before you have a big problem. All right, whether you're in a conventional tillage system or not, what we do encourage you to do is consider taking out the top compaction layer and the bottom one too. A lot of times you'll find compaction layers down at 14, 18, 20 inches deep. So on our farm, occasionally, we're running a machine we call a zone builder. It's basically a deep ripper with a narrow point and a straight shank. So we're not trying to roll the soil. We're simply trying to make some slices in that soil, kind of lift it, set it back down. And by doing this, we haven't completely removed the base. So in between where we've done this tillage at 30 inches, then we at least can go out there, 
in a wet condition uh, or a wet fall, wet spring, something like that, we've got some kind of base. We're not just sinking down to nowhere. But by having those slices in the ground, and we've been able to show this in root pits, roots are always going to take the path of least resistance. So even if it's 10 inches, 15 inches away from where they're growing, they will start migrating to where that slot is, and then that will allow you to get more roots down deeper in the ground. So that's one very important thing you can do with tillage. Earlier in the show, we were talking about organic matter. If we have better overall organic matter in the soil, we're less likely to have compaction. We're more likely to have roots just continuing to grow down. But I look at this uh, quite often, guys say, well, I'm going to go to no-till or reduced till. Okay, that's great, but let's fix the problem first. You've got a hard pan, maybe a couple hard pans in the soil. You're going to have to slice through those in order to make anything happen. Yes, cover crops can help. That might be able to solve the problem for you, but in a lot of cases, hey, we know this tillage solution absolutely does work. Again, narrow points, straight shanks. All right, and two other things to talk about, just avoidance. If it's wet, stay out of the fields. Don't create the compaction to start with. That's easier said than done. We don't farm in an ideal world, and sometimes, you know what? We just have to get the crop out because it's going to start snowing next week, and we'll never get it. Uh, I understand that. The other thing is frost. Uh, in the northern part of the United States, in climates where that frost is going to go deep down into the soil, farmers are, are believing that, you know what, frost is just going to cure up my compaction. Well, when you can still see tracks from where the wagon trains went through in the 1800s, uh, and it hasn't broken down in northern Minnesota, in North Dakota, well, it's not going to happen. If it hasn't happened over 100 years, the problem that you created out in your field over the last 10 or 20 is not going to go away. So yes, frost can help a little bit, but it's not going to help a whole lot. You do need to solve that problem. The other big thing that we haven't mentioned is what you're doing with your tires or tracks. So we've done a lot of work with Michelin, for example, and talking about tire pressures, getting the right tire, uh, maybe switching to tracks. You got to look at all these things. The big thing is we just want you to address compaction as much as you can on your farm because as you do that and as you reduce the amount of compaction in your field, you're going to have better yields. Another thing that's going to lead to better yields, of course, is controlling our weed of the week. We'll tell you how to do it next.